Um, I'm so excited to see Justin Cormack, who I haven't seen in a while, um, who is, um, hey, Justin, so Hello. good to see you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great to see you online. And we are very, very excited about your um, keynote talk. <clears throat> in fact, we kind of had put out a, a, a call also for keynotes, and we were so excited how many people we have who are official members of the CNCF, and in your case, the TOC. And so you uh, proffered this very grandiose title of uh, GitOps in the next five years. So it's a really great way to kick off this morning. Um, like I said, for many of our audience members, today is the day that we kind of have those types of visionary talks. So looking forward to it. And with that, I will hand it over to you. Thanks. It's great to see you. Yeah, I mean, the next five years, this talk's really about what I want to see in the next five years, because, um, and, you know, some of it, I know that I'm going to have to help make it happen, because it's, um, you know, it won't necessarily happen. But some of it's also about, you know, the kind of directions I see things going in as well. And what, and, uh, um, you know, and of course, being one of my talks, that kind of starts from, where, where where the past was and how we got here as well. Um, just a bit of background. This is what this is where I live more or less. I live in the in the in the, in the sort of science countryside in Cambridge, UK. Um, as I mentioned, I'm on the CNCF TOC, and that kind of puts me in a position where I can see what's going on. It's really exciting to see how much work there is on GitOps in the CNCF. And um, I'm also um, CTO at Docker and um, you know, I think that I'll explain in some of this talk how how Docker fits in this and how 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 our journey is related to GitOps as well. Um, kind of really want to start ten years ago. Um, as I said, I'll always like some history in my talks. Sometimes my talks are mostly history. Cornelia had some history in her talk too, and I think my history overlaps, but it's got a little slightly different viewpoint. I was a bit um, kind of worried that I'm, I had to rewrite my talk suddenly. She was saying the same things, but I think it's quite complimentary. Um, so let's let's take a look at ten years ago, um, and this book in particular. Um, this is my copy of this of the continuous delivery book by Jess Humble and Dave Farley, um, and this was incredibly influential. I remember being really excited when I read this book. It was, you know, the, the first book that kind of reflected. Um, the kind of changes that were going on um, and it had all the kind of principles. And a lot of people say, well, GitOps is just what was written in this book. And so partly I wanted to kind of start off by saying, well, no, there's a, there's a lot of context that happened. This was 10 years ago, things happened five years ago. Um, but really, you know, where did this, where did this stuff came from, come from? And really, um, at least through the eyes of my history of this, um, it really, um, it really kind of um, came from a kind of um, sysadmin point of view. And I think as someone said earlier, you know, we didn't really have continuous deployment for developers at all at this point. It was really, uh, it started with continuous deployment for infrastructure. Things like Puppet were very influential as 2005. Um, EC2 uh, was launched in 2006. And, you know, that the launch of the Amazon Web Services over this period really influenced how we thought about infrastructure. Um, and DevOps days 2009 was incredibly important, that kind of culture about, um, about DevOps and automation. Um, but it was, it, even though it was DevOps, a lot of it was really about deploying infrastructure, which developers would eventually use, but not really deploying applications directly so much through continuous deployment at the beginning. Um, and really, five years ago, five years ago um, is when GitOps actually, as a term, started, and that was kind of reflected in this kind of environment. I looked at I looked at the Google Trends for GitOps. It's kind of nice. You can see um, December twenty sixteen was the first mention, and see the dotted line at the top. That's where G Google says um, this event is going to drive um, right here, right now. Another doubling in the interest in GitOps. Um, so, you know, I think it, it's a it's an interesting, um, it's, you know, it's an interesting growth, and it, uh, um, since then, and that grad, you know, that gradual increase in interest in GitOps is reflects, you know, that changing world. Um, but what really happened in between the sort of ten years ago and five years ago, um, one was the kind of Git and GitOps. Um, 
get became really the only um the only um version control system that people really used um if, if you read the cd book it was it had a long discussions about the benefits of version control and this new thing about distributed version control um and somehow over that period partly you know with github and with um you know kind of a, a community convergence particularly of open source on git um we got to having one choice and that's why it's git ops not cvs ops or uh, SVN ops or, or mercurial ops. Um, you know, it's not necessarily the, necessarily the best, but it's um, it gave us that uniformity so that there was one thing to start with. Um, you know, I work at Docker. I wasn't there in 2013. I joined a couple of years after that. But um, Docker was, I think, the most important thing about Docker, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, was how it, we started packaging applications as self-contained images with all their dependencies. Um, and that was the critical piece of uh, allowing applications to have CD. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, Terraform and Kubernetes um, amazingly came in the same year. Um, it was an exciting time. Terraform um, and Kubernetes both had this notion of convergence um, and convergent infrastructure that, again, that you know Nathan talked about being really important. Um, that that idea of convergent infrastructure and particularly in Kubernetes conversion conversion applications and application infrastructure and container infrastructure was incredibly important and actually um meaning that we didn't really have to build that convergence layer into things we already had tools that could do it and docker was really a developer tool and this really spread helped spread the kind of um some of these devops messages to developers as well as to, to to infrastructure and helped add applications into this kind of mix that we were seeing before. Um, so, you know, the, these together, um, you know, really created this kind of thing where we could take GitOps and it would be, um, you know, it was Git, it, there were Docker images that were complete and deterministic about the application. We had convergent infrastructure. We had these um, deterministic idempotent delivery systems. And it was actually quite easy relative to what it had been 10 years ago to really start building um, you know, opinionated tools. And we started to see things like Flux up here and later we got Argo and Argo CD and so on. So you know, that was really what was the difference between 10 years ago and five years ago. Um, so looking at it through, sort of through that lens, you know, where's the next five years going to take us? Where are those tools taking us? Um, let's start with Git. Um, you know, we're going to see things that are not GitOps and so on. Git itself isn't changing, but one of the things we've seen is, um, you know, a lot of Git, GitOps it does integrate things that are not Git, and that's actually a really important thing. It's um, that we have to kind of address and deal with. I mean, I, this um, this diagram is from a Weave um, a blog post in 2018, and it um, and these, you know, this is still, you know, the model that um, tooling supports. And I kind of, this, these things kind of make me sad. Um, I know why it's like this, but, you know, GitOps should have a nice arrow kind of from Git uh, to production and not a kind of, um, you know, messy kind of thing where things go into, registries and S3 buckets and, um, you know, wh why are we, you know, why have we made it ex this complicated? Um, why isn't GitOps just about committing things to Git and them appearing in production? Why have we ended up with all this infrastructure in between? And um, I think the one of the issues that is really important to me because I kind of work on, you know, on Docker Hub and um, with the CNCF distribution project, which is a um, registry implementation that lots and lots of people use is what's the difference and similarity between um, Git and registries? Um, why are these things different? Why are they the same? Why are we having to use both of them to do GitOps? Um, and they share a lot of similarities in many ways. They're both built under underneath, uh, under in the plumbing layer is content addressable stores. 
and they're probably the two most widely used content addressable stores. Um, we won't mention that one uses SHA-1 and one uses SHA-256 at the moment because that's a, that's a long story and that's been fixed gradually. Um, but registries have very different performance characteristics in production from Git, and they were designed um, you know, to ship large container images at scale, whereas um, Git was designed to ship small pieces of source code at scale. Um, and those have really meant that there's a lot of different design trade-offs in the implementation, even though the conceptual model of them is basically um, more or less identical. Um, and we're seeing some sorts of things that um, converge like large object supporting Git, which is being driven by a lot of game developers who want to commit game assets to Git. Um, and we're seeing, um, you know, I think we're seeing a lot more use of you know, registries and so on integrated with GitOps. And we need to make these work better together. And I think that um, this is going to be something that um, is something I'm really interested in um, helping to drive and working out how we can actually make these work together and um, tidy up that messy diagram of, of the kind of chain of um, having something like Flux looking at a registry and try and making commits based on image pushes and rather than let's push something let's push a commit in let's build something in a registry and let's automatically um, link that um, the content that's been built to the it, it, as a chain from the commit and then push the the combination to the um into productions and, and so these it's kind of we get a straight line again rather than that kind of messy diagram and this comes to another question that people ask a lot which is can we do GitOps without git can we do GitOps with our s3 buckets and our registries and other things like that um and i've got a quite strong opinion on this that the this content addressability thing the um the hashes and the knowing the exact bits of the content have not been modified is a vital part of the security parts of GitOps that I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a minute. Um, and so an S3 bucket is not a substitute for Git. Um, you can, an S3 bucket with a hash is potentially a substitute, but you're better off using something like a registry, which is just a kind of thin layer over S3 in some sense, um, or Git itself to do GitOps. And, and that part is important. And, I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. I'm also, and this kind of relates to why the kind of this thing kind of makes me sad. Computers shouldn't be making Git commits in the branches of Git that you use. You shouldn't be rebasing over automated commits that systems have made. Um, you should treat automated work as disposable and should be able to be rebuilt. So you don't really want it, you know, in your in your main branch of your repo. Automated branches should be separate branches that you can kind of just destroy and rebuild if necessary. Um, and we need to be able to validate these things. There's going to be a lot more I'm going to talk about validation in a, in a minute. But there's a lot of work to do in this kind of how do we work better with things that are not in Git with GitOps. And I think that's really important. Um, the Docker image, I think. Um, I kind of think that we talked too much about um, container escapes and containers versus VMs, and that wasn't the important thing. As I said earlier, the important thing about um, Docker images was actually um, packaging your complete application, all its dependencies in one place. And I think that this is what is the kind of legacy of Docker rather than the, um, the current implementation. And I think that um, all applications are gonna be packaged in this way and, if we have these kind of workflows through GitOps and registries, these will work for any kind of application, not just the things that we're using in containers right now. Um, convergent APIs, I think, um, you know, as as um, again as Nathan mentioned, and you know, the Kubernetes really showed, and Cornelia as well, Kubernetes showed that APIs could be declarative and convergent, and we, and that's how they should ship, um, and. Kubernetes has showed the real benefits, and I think we're going to get convergent APIs everywhere. And so we're going to be able to do GitOps much more easily on things that are not Kubernetes. 
Um, so there's things like CloudFormation is a convergent API. Every, you know, every cloud provider has something along those lines. It's pretty, they're all different, but hey. Um, Crossplane is another interesting CNCF project about um, basically extending Kubernetes to control other things that are not Kubernetes objects, but with the same convergent API. And I think it's a really exciting approach. Um, and I think people will realize that when you build an API, you should build it as you know, a Kubernetes style convergent API from the get-go rather than starting with a REST API. And I think that that's, that's really going to um, transform our ability to use GitOps with more things over the next five years. Um, supply chain security is an area that I'm particularly interested in. Um, I highly recommend you read the CNCF Tag Security so Software Supply Chain Best Practices White Paper that just came out uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's a really good read. It was a really, um, it's a really important um, thing to be aware of. And you know, they, they've kind of boiled it down to four principles of um, around the supply chain of every step should be trustworthy, automation is critical, build environments have to be clearly defined and scoped, and everyone needs to be mutually authenticated. And, um, you know, my, my view is this is very, very close to GitOps, and we are going to use GitOps to build the secure supply chain, and these things are very, very similar. GitOps is what you need to build your secure software supply chain infrastructure. Your build infrastructure is, you know, software-defined infrastructure. It needs to be declarative and automated and convergent and validatable and deterministic, everything that, you know, we've got GitOps to deliver us. There's this model of the software factory that's come from the US Department of Defense, which effectively I think is best seen as a set of GitOps pipelines um, for build and for building your infrastructure internally and so on. All the inputs come from Git. All the build infrastructure is ephemeral, which is why, um, why you need GitOps to build your infrastructure. You've, um, but that gives you um, no persistent attacks and no long-term private keys. Everything's built on demand for builds you're doing. And so everything is defined on GitOps infrastructure. Um, and in a sense, more than that, I think that so secure supply chain really is GitOps with authenticity and verification pieces on top. So uh, what I mean by that is that you, know, you can trace every um, hash of every image that you're shipping or every piece of software you're shipping back to the commits and builds at the beginning of the process, i.e. the Git. Um, and you can verify that everything in between those steps happened was defined in Git and those processes happened in the way you expect. And that's the kind of, that's the model which we'll have, which takes GitOps plus this authenticity and verification piece and turns it into a full secure supply chain. Um, and these are, you know, signed and authentic. Um, and we, we really have, um, we have little hints about what this looks like. And I think that, um, you know, it's something that we, we need to build, um, but we have little pieces in Toto as a CNCF project again for, um, for um, um, uh, um, in Toto is um, basically close to um, you know, a kind of model of what this looks like with hashes in and hashes out, but it doesn't kind of directly refer to it GitOps, but I think we'll, We'll get there. And trusted compute is another area that's related to this that's really interesting. And the finally, the last thing I want to talk about um, is usability. Um, again, I think that um, some of this came up a little bit in previous talks. I was kind of disappointed when ThoughtWorks came out with this quote about um, GitOps being something you should approach with care, because I think that it didn't. I think it wasn't very nuanced. I was kind of annoyed by this. I think I decided at the time that it was my comments about this were too long to fit in one, one tweet. Um, and controlling complex systems is complex. You know, this is, a, I, I love these photographs of old Soviet control rooms. Con, you know, if you're controlling a lot of things, it is complex, but, um, you know, we shouldn't be thinking about it as, you know, one, you know, person managed Git branch per thing that you want to control with GitOps. You know, that's, these problem problems are unsolved, but we, we know where we want to go with this. And I think, you know, another, another speaker's mentioned the kind of IoT devices and that kind of scale up. 
Um, and, um, you know, we're, if you have tens of thousands of devices that you're deploying with GitOps, you do not want tens of thousands of branches, but you want to have, um, you want tens of thousands of human managed branches. I, I'm kind of enthusiastic about the idea of computer managed Git branches, and I've kind of been playing with that idea, but, um, you know, humans want to commit to, you know, a small number of branches that they manage, but then we want to automate out and um, scale scale out to enormous numbers of computers that we're controlling. And I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done, you know, to have better models and practice for this. I think that you know tools like Flagger show that we can do, you know, some kind, you know, some kinds of um, production rollout with GitOps without having to control, you know, every piece of the deployment, but um, there's way more we need to do as we're going to manage larger and larger deployments with GitOps that's inevitably is an important part of what's going to happen. So um, I hope you find some of these ideas exciting and let's um, work on them and let's build a GitOps for the next five years that does all the fun, exciting and secure things that we really want to deliver. <laughs>